It looks like you got some sun. We are live. We are live. We're oh. live. Very good. Thank you very much. And welcome to the Town of East Hampton Planning Board meeting for February 3rd, 2021. We have a number of site plan reviews on this evening. Um, we also have one matter on for a resolution in our regular meeting. So let's get right to it uh, with uh, 80 Firestone. And uh, tonight, by a special appointment, we will be uh, presented by Brian Frank. So, Brian, I, take it away. I oh, see. Sorry, brother, before we go. Do we have counsel for 80 Firestone? It's um, uh, Joel Halsey. I see him, see him on there. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I, and, and Andy Hammer should be on here as well. Is he here? I'm letting Andy uh, Hammer in now. Mr. Thank Hammer. you very much. There. There he is, Richard A. Hammer. Hello, Andrew. How are you? You got him? There he is. Okay. Well, go ahead, Brian. Take it away. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, board members. Uh, Brian Frank from the East Hampton Planning Department. Uh, this is a uh, site plan follow-up uh, for uh, 80 Firestone Road, uh, Bluff Crest Cottages. As the board may recall, this was um, uh, an application that the board had uh, reviewed back in um, uh, July of uh, last year. Um, uh, the board had, had reviewed it uh, previously in 2016, but the project has ha had changed a lot since then so that... Um, Last July's review was really uh, kind of a, a second initial review, if you'll pardon the contradiction in terms. Um, and in that application, uh, as you know, the property is improved with four separate detached resort units um, that are proposed to be um, uh, demolished, removed from the property, and in its place, four new um, 600 square foot resort units are, are proposed to uh, replace it. Uh, a number of items were identified in the last site plan review, and I'll um, go through them uh, one by one. Um, as you know, I, I don't often uh, appear before the planning board, so if I if I go too fast or if um, I, I glaze over something or, or somebody needs to stop me for something, um, uh, please uh, feel free. Um, we'll, we'll try not to slap you around. Uh, well... <laughs> It'll feel like home if you do, so uh, feel free. <laughs> um, so this is the uh, this is the survey that had uh, been revised. Um, as you may recall, um, this is a layout for four detached units. They're 600 square feet. They each have decking, roof decks uh, above them, and um, full basements. One of the items that was initially I identified in the uh, review last July was the um, ADA uh, parking space had been located uh, somewhat arbitrarily. And um, to meet ADA guidelines, uh, the planning department recommended uh, locating um, the parking space in proximity to one of the units and providing an improved surface to the units to meet ADA um, standards. Uh, the applicants have done that. Um, as, you, as you see, the uh, parking hasn't changed. There's still ingress. Um, at the northern end of the property and egress at the southern end of the property with um, diagonal uh, parking in front. Um, another one of the um, items that the uh, uh, planning department um, brought to the board's attention and uh, the board wanted the applicants to address were disturbance to uh, steep slopes in the northern portion of the property. Um, as you recall, it drops off very steeply uh, to, the, to the north of the property, especially to the uh, northeast. And the proximity of Unit 1B to these slopes was an area of concern, um, sp specifically with regard to the extent of, of uh, clearing and disturbance that was shown in association with it. Uh, the planning department felt that the uh, depiction of uh, the original clearing boundary was unrealistic um, to facilitate the construction as proposed and um, more detail was uh, warranted, um, a, a more realistic clearing boundary and, and a more um, realistic extent of grading to be shown. Uh, the applicants have chosen to address that by the elimination of five feet of decking um, on the north side of the building um, 
to the uh, west of, of uh, the, the front porch. On the earlier survey that you had reviewed from uh, April of last year, there was uh, an additional five feet of decking here. Uh, that decking has um, been removed to provide a little bit more separation um, from the work area uh, to these uh, slopes to the north. And um, in, in reviewing uh, or, in, or in reviewing at the end of uh, this presentation and after the applicant goes, uh, I'm sure the, the, the planning board will decide if, if their concerns have been um, adequately uh, addressed. Um, as you know, the or as you may recall, the uh, property did requ does require approval from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, these units meet the um, re resort units are required to meet uh, transient uh, transient motel special permit standards. And the design of these units meet the uh, criteria for um, th those um, transient standards with the exception of being in a multiple unit building. That required a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, also, the, uh, act, the, the stairs from the top of the bluff uh, down to the beach also required uh, a natural resources special permit. Uh, that application was the subject of a, a, a hearing in front of the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, at the end of November of uh, last year and a determination is uh, uh, forthcoming. So the variance has not been granted yet and that in and of itself is enough to, um, uh, you know, so the application is not ready for a, a public hearing, um, obviously until those variances or the variance is uh, granted. Um, but there are other issues that the planning board has a, an opportunity to um, address. Um, I, uh, we spent a fair amount of time uh, just discussing the revegetation of the property in the initial application. And I do have the uh, plans. Um, maybe I'll switch over to them now. <clears throat> The, the um, property has a fairly um, ambitious landscaping plan, um, but I still think at the heart of the issue is, is the planning department disagrees with characterizing the landscaping as uh, a revegetation. Um, there are a lot of uh, native specimen species uh, around each of the individual units. Um, there is uh, a lawn in the um, Western portion of the property that uh, I think everybody agrees constitutes um, clearing. But there are large areas that are, are proposed to be planted with um, uh, a very short sedge, Carex pensylvanica, it's Pennsylvania sedge. It is a native plant. We do have it growing all over um, East Hampton, but it, but it really grows in woodlands and small patches. It's used as landscaping, and, and if you uh, take a look at websites or, or um, uh, uh, landscape companies that specialize in, in marketing the plant, they'll often describe it as a low-maintenance lawn. It's a, a sedge that grows to anywhere between 8 and 12 inches. Um, it is uh, deer-resistant, which uh, makes it uh, more popular. But we really don't have any sedge meadows in, in town here. And there's really not much of a difference in the planning department's opinion between this area of um, sedge and this fescue lawn. Um, the, the property is extensively cleared. And in the planning department's opinion, it's proposed to stay extensively cleared. And that uh, those clearing calculations should be accurately reflected on the, um, uh, on the plans. There may be some revegetation required by the Zoning Board of Appeals um, in the western part of the property in, in the vicinity of the bluff. And um, our town code, just to paraphr paraphrase our definition of revegetation, you're essentially naturalizing an area. You're, you're planting um, species that mimic what occurs in natural communities to kind of um, naturalize an area. Um, what's here is a, a landscaping plan and a good landscaping plan but it, it's not a revegetation. It's unrealistic to expect um, 19 or, or 16,000 square feet of area to be naturalized uh, amongst these um, buildings. And um, I think to call it a revegetation would uh, be to um, set a poor precedent um, going forward in the future for, for what constitutes uh, a revegetation. Uh, 
Brian, can I can I ask you a question? Um, how do you how do you think that Pennsylvania sedge would be maintained? Um, it, it's pretty low maintenance. I'm sure it re would require some irrigation. Um, I, I guess if you plant it in a sufficient density, it would look very much like a lawn. And since it does kind of top out at uh, at about 10 inches, it wouldn't need to be mowed very often, except you would be trimming kind of the wispy tops of it um, if it was mowed uh, periodically. Um, beyond that, it's low maintenance. That's part of its uh, marketing appeal. So mowing would could be the planned maintenance option. It wouldn't require it very often. It, it okay. certainly will. It doesn't grow as tall or as fast um, as as a fescue, for example. So how often that would need to be mowed um, remains to be seen. Okay. Thanks. Sure. Um, a lot of the vegetation around the property is, uh, you know, again, this is uh, native vegetation. There are rows of evergreens along the um, uh, northern and southern property lines. Um, with, with the exception of um, some ornamental evergreens in the, uh, along the street side of the property, everything is native. But there is a difference between landscaping and, and revegetation, and it's important to um, to differentiate between the two. Um, in the uh, in the July uh, review by the planning board, uh, the planning board had expressed interest in um, applying the groundwater protection policy to the basements of uh, the the units here. Um, the applicants are asking the uh, planning board to reconsider that. Um, my understanding, uh, which uh, admittedly is, is limited, is that that um, waterproofing policy, that groundwater protection policy, is intended to protect groundwater in areas of um, commercial and industrial uses to keep um, uh, hazardous compounds like pesticides, like petroleum products, um, out of our groundwater resource. Uh, the applicants are, are contending that this is more of a, a residential use and that those chemicals will not be stored in the basement of these uh, units and is asking the planning board to uh, reconsider uh, the applicability of that policy. Uh, a lighting plan has been submitted. Uh, a lighting plan was not included in the uh, initial submission with the application. There is a, a, land, a lighting plan now. Um, and uh, the planning department believes that it's uh, still incomplete for a couple of uh, reasons. These are um, bollard lights uh, around the buildings and around the pathways. Uh, a lighting schedule that indicates the uh, lumen levels has not been provided and that's uh, necessary to uh, determine compliance with the uh, planning board's exterior lighting guidelines. At this time, there's also no um, lighting at the at the entrance of the buildings which may be a, a, a building code requirement and that's something that uh, the applicant should include as well uh, the application had been uh, reviewed by the architectural review board in september um, the uh, arb um, tabled the application uh, to uh, obtain um, more uh, colors and samples from the applicant from the applicant and I believe that uh, that's still pending. I don't believe it's gone uh, back before the ARB yet. Um, and uh, those are really the uh, the main issues with the application. Um, I'm, I'm gonna stop now and, and see if anybody has any questions. Uh, I have the survey, the original survey. Um, I, I scrolled through the plans a little bit quickly and I apologize for, for that if, if it was a little bit rushed. But if there's uh, anything else that I can I can uh, share with the uh, w with the board or any questions that I can answer, I'd be happy to. Hey, Brian, just so you know, we, we generally go next to the applicant, and then we'll come back under the direction of uh, the committee to uh, to you, and and or to the applicant. Okay. Okay. So just sure. sit tight. Okay, uh, Mr. Hammer. Andy, are you guys uh, expecting anyone on the phone line? I know that there's two callers on hold right now. Yes, I have two people on, on hold. One is, I think it's Alex Bluedorn, who, uh, and uh, 
let me see who is on hold. Uh, and Joel Halsey, I believe, is also on the line. I thought I saw Joel on our uh, screen. It's no, I'm, I'm on, I'm on uh, the Zoom call, but I think it would be a, a member from Stell who would be on the other line. Chair, if you'd like. The I architect. Have a, I have a phone caller I can unmute if you'd like. Yeah, please. Sure. Please. I'll unmute that Thank caller you. now. The last four digits of their phone are 6341. Thank you. Good evening, board. Yes, this is Jonathan Subject with Rahani Architects. Okay. And I also see Alex Bluedorn is on the line. Uh, you know, he's on hold too. I believe he's a landscape architect, correct? There are no yeah, other callers, um, uh, Chair, at this time. If that yeah. there was a caller that hung yeah. up, it I'm, could be them. If they yeah, I'm on, I'm on, the, I'm on the Zoom, Andy. Yeah, he's on the oh, Zoom. Okay, cool. Yeah, we see um, him there on the screen. I can't see him all at once, so you see his oh. name on the screen. And uh, Joel, um, so Halsey, you're uh, muted, just so you know. Perfect. Yes, just to avoid background noise. No, you're not. Okay, very good. Now you are. Okay, so I just to introduce, you know, thank you all for having us here, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, you know, we're following up on what I thought was a pretty well received hearing at the Zoning Board of Appeals. We're waiting for that decision. Uh, and I think it was gracious to bring this back to the board so we can kind of hash out some of the uh, uh, outstanding issues while we wait for that uh, final decision from the Zoning Board. Uh, I think Brian did an accurate uh, presentation in terms of what's outstanding. Uh, I just want to touch briefly on the four things he spoke of. One is the slopes. Uh, and we did, we removed some decking to gain a little bit of clearance. What I think is also important is if you look at those surveys, you can see that we're just talking about decking in that location. The, the actual hard structure and excavation of the foundations are much farther removed. So we're talking about basically a little bit of overhanging deck, uh, and we think we can abide by that without any more disturbance. The foundation uh, that's going to be poured is, you know, I don't know, 15 or 20 feet farther away from that edge. So this is just gonna be decking on framing. Uh, but you know, we are happy to do that to uh, alleviate some any concerns that you raised. Uh, the landscaping, you know, and, and maybe Alex has a, a different take on it. Uh, I think that our landscape plan, whether it's reveg or not, and maybe it's more accurate to call it a landscape plan, is still a very, it's a meritorious uh, plan that perhaps should be uh, uh, something that should be modeled in, in the town. You know, we're trying to use all native landscaping uh, and we're trying to do it in a manner sensitive to both the use and intensity of the use, uh, as well as the plants themselves. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I think that it's a dramatic improvement over the property as it sits right now. You have four units and it's basically mowed lawn right now. So I, I do think it's a merit, uh, you know, it has a lot of merit, uh, and whether you call it landscaping, uh, which which perhaps that's what we will do, I, I think it's a great landscape plan and something that could be a model for future landscape plans that come in, particularly in areas like, uh, you know, that are sensitive in, in this instance, uh, it really is a dramatic improvement. It's not, it's being offered by the applicant. It's not something that's required because of NRSP mitigation, et cetera. Pretty much everything on our property is outside of NRSP jurisdiction with, you know, with the exception of the, the bluff staircase that we're proposing. Yeah. Uh, with respect to the groundwater protection pro uh, if, issue, you know, these are in fact our cottages. It's more as akin to a residential use. Uh, and, and my basement doesn't have groundwater protection policy. Uh, and to my knowledge, this would be the only resort unit ever created with groundwater protection policy. Uh, you know, you know what, what I'd suggest is maybe we could do a compromise and do some form of epoxy or sealant in the basement. Just so, you know, that, that's a, a valid concern. I'm not trying to minimize it but I do think the groundwater protection policy is a very expensive component. Uh, maybe we could submit something that would be, maybe not meet that same criteria, which I have seen applied to commercial industrial, commercial service applications where you have landscapes, you know, landscapers and uh, contractors that are gonna be storing materials. There's no intent to do any of that or any need to do it on these properties. They're essentially gonna be uh, basements used for storage and, and for, uh, you know, to create a insulated barrier. 
that that's essentially all we're looking for here. Uh, with respect to the lighting plan, certainly we can get you the additional details. I was unaware that they hadn't been submitted, uh, but I think that's just information and we do have time to get that all to the board uh, while we wait for these other approvals. So uh, unless Alex or some, uh, someone from Jonathan has anything to add, uh, you know, I'm just happy to be here tonight and hopefully we can get some resolution on some of these that matter so we can keep moving forward. Good. Does anybody else from the applicant uh, wish to speak? In that case, Lou, this is yours. Yeah, um, I, um, I'm i very much impressed by this application and the plans that they put together. Uh, I think it's an enhancement to uh, the neighborhood and, and the town from what's there now. <clears throat> I appreciate some of the comments that Brian has made uh, regarding the revegetation that technically, uh, in his opinion, it's not really uh, indigenous revegetation. But uh, I, I got to tell you, um, you know, looking at that landscape plan, if you want to call it that, um, I think it's impressive. I think it's attractive. Uh, aesthetically, uh, it's high quality. And again, I think it's, you know, uh, it doesn't, I, I don't see it doing any harm environmentally or aesthetically. As a matter of fact, I think it enhances the aesthetics of the area. So I have no, no issues with uh, any of the plantings and the full landscape plan as a whole. Um, the, uh, I appreciate the, the applicant removing that decking on unit 1B. I think that that was an important step to take. I don't think any further action is necessary in my opinion. Um, so I think, you know, for, as far as I'm concerned, that, that, that issue has been addressed. Uh, on waterproofing the basement, I was hoping that the applicant would uh, apply the uh, groundwater protection policy there. But I, you know, I, I understand that, you know, Andy made a good point. These are uh, residential units. They're not commercial properties that uh, uh, in, are involved in using chemicals and that sort of thing. So I think it would in effect be uh, a good compromise, what he suggested, if they could put uh, some sort of epoxy to give us a little more protection. Um, and then the last issue, the lighting fixtures, I'm sure they'll work that out with the planning department as far as having lights over each uh, of the front doors, that kind of thing. Uh, I'm sure that could get worked out. Uh, so I, you know, I know we need to wait for the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, decision, but as far as I'm concerned, uh, I think this is good to go, uh, pending that, that decision. Okay. Um, I, I don't know what, uh, how the rest of the board feels. Maybe I should uh, put it open and see if anyone, I don't want, know that I need to, we need to go around the table on this. Does anyone have any specific comments that they wish to make? The only question I had um, okay. was, so it okay. wasn't over, it wasn't over cleared or anything like that. So when, you know, they're calling it a revegetation plan, but it's not like we are requesting that certain amount of the property needs to be revegetated. Is that, is that the case? Uh, that is the case. This is a resort zoning district and there aren't clearing restrictions. Okay. Unless, it's, it would, unless it would be a harbor protection overlay district, it wouldn't have clearing restrictions. Okay. So, all right. That's the only question I had. Okay. Uh, uh, actually, I was going to start. I was going to start this <coughs> with, with you, Sharon. So, okay. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, in that yeah. case, I think I see Randy um, oh. wants to ask something. So, <laughs> there we keep going, Randy. Okay. Um, so, there's a reference on each each unit for it says optional spa and i wonder i just wondered a little more about that option according to who whose option is that is that a question for uh me or the i'm here this is joel um 
Yeah, I'm not quite sure why that this is the first time I've actually seen the OBT period on there. I don't believe the spas are optional. I think they are proposed to be on the on the um all the structures. Uh, I, I'm going to uh, mute myself and let Jonathan subject uh, complete answering this question because he might know more than I do. In that case, hello, working. You're breaking up. Hello. Hard to hear you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So the. I think that's just a nomenclature that needs to be removed from the plan. At one point, uh, we were uh, reviewing options for pools and options for spas, and we settled on a spa. So uh, the, the spa will be included with the units when they're built. And that's a, that's a hot tub, basically? It's a hot tub. That's correct. Um, okay, so then uh, <clears throat> the... Um, so I think part of the, the question about uh, groundwater protection standards is, <clears throat> do we know what kind of fuel these units are gonna use for heat? We may have asked Andy this already. We yeah, know uh, this, is Joel, this is Joel. It's, uh, there's a propane tank, if you see in the uh, southeast corner, every unit will be uh, fueled by the propane. Okay, so- there will uh, be no fuel stored in the basement. Okay, and then, um, if the the spa, if these are uh, spa, you know, hot tubs, how isn't there a, like a filter or chlorine or some chemical that would be probably stored? But I, I don't know that that matters. I'm just asking. I believe most these of these units are, now are all chlorine reducing units, and uh, they, they silver use silver oxide. I believe yeah. they use silver oxide bags. It, it's actually like a, uh, you put, you wash them in your dishwasher, but that's essentially what they use for disinfection, silver oxide, and a little bit of uh, bromine, I believe, is, is also part of it, but it's not typical chlorine. It's a much milder compound. So it's probably just uh, something that would be stored in a drawer in the unit or something. Yes, that's good. It's, it's very low, uh, very low space. It's not, not typically... It, you know, held in large quantities like chlorine. So then a couple other things. Um, <clears throat> do I, I agree with Lou that, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful plan and it looks like a lot of thought go, went into it. Do all of these units have walkways? They have access to the staircase to the beach? I can't see the way the survey so they, do they all connect with the stairs to the beach? Through the lawn, I believe. So they have to come through the lawn area to get to the stairs. That's correct. There's, the, the, there's kind of a great lawn in the front, which is more or less where we're, you know, that every, if you're gonna congregate, that's probably be where you would, and then you would walk onto the stairs from there, but there aren't improved walkways. Okay. Um, yeah, the only other que question I had was um, if these are going to be, if this is a resort and and it's these units are going to be rented, is is there an office somewhere or is there an offsite office? Um, and then uh, as far as maintaining the property, with do you think that that'll just be? contractor who comes and doesn't store equipment there and all that so that's really it is there an office or is there a maintenance a need for a maintenance building or an office on site there will be no need for an office on site or a maintenance building everything will be contracted off site um so yeah there will be no you know it'll be just your, your typical landscaper coming to, to do you know do the landscape work your contractor coming to do any kind of renovations or, or you know repairs to re you know in the units, and um, and they'll probably actually have somebody coming in to maintain the spas on a on a contract basis. So uh, no, so, so in other words, no storage shed or anything like that. No, no. I mean, you have some trash bins, and that's about it. Yeah, and if you, and I just yeah. wanted to point out the, the back to the if we ha harken back to the uh, the walkway to the uh, the the water or the the stairs of the water, you'll notice that all of the, the units either connect via the one walkway uh, to, on the south, the grit walkway, or the the one uh, the one 
one B unit, I believe that is, has its own walkway to the uh, to the lawn area and then to the stairs to the beach. Okay, very good. And cool. then, where as far as uh, the resort use, this is probably a question for Joanne. The resort use would allow these units to be rented um, for, let's say, just for discussion. They could be rented year round. They could be rented by the week. They could be rented for the weekend. Generally speaking, they're rented a more short term. I'd have to go back and research the code a little bit to see what it says about the length of, of time. Um, it's something that doesn't come up very often. I, I do believe that they are designed to be rented on a, a shorter term basis but the code does acknowledge they can be rented on longer term basis, meaning year monthly or whatever, but, but they have to be designed to be rent, you know, sort of like a, a motel room, which can be rented for shorter periods, but renting for a longer period of time is not precluded by the code either. So is that the intention? <clears throat> well, I think their intention is to run this as a resort, which yeah, would be shorter term rentals typically. Okay. All right, the, the, Randy, do you have anything else? Well, so so as long as the I don't know how the health department looks at the at the septic, but uh, we would want the septic to be able to handle basically handle, I guess, up to year round use if they I, I believe it is evaluated on a basis of a year round use and occupancy, but it's based on the square footage of the unit. So up to, I think it's 1200 square feet, it has a certain calculation. And as you exceed that, it gets a greater calculation. Okay. Yeah. And let's uh, go around the, um, does anyone else have anything, uh, any other questions for the uh, applicant or for Brian? I don't have any questions, Sam, but the I only- well, was, was that Kathy? Yes, that's Kathy. Uh, I tell you what, Ian, since uh, if, if, let me let me hear from Kathy, and then I'll keep going around, and I'll, I'll get you next. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Kathy. And first of all, I th I want to thank the applicant for um, you know coming back with something that addressed most of our concerns. I think uh, you know, the plantings are lovely. I think that's a really nice idea, but I do take Brian's point that it should be called a landscaping plan rather than a revegetation plan because we use those terms for distinct, um, distinctly different purposes. Uh, and I also agree totally with what, uh, with uh, Andy's concern about the uh, groundwater protection policy. I'm sure that was my suggestion, but I would, I would gratefully accept your um, compromise to latex the floors. I think that would be sufficient. If these are gonna be turned over quickly, there are gonna be a lot of cleaning agents that have to be used. And I think that that would be, that'd be in the best interest of the water body there. Um, so thank you for that offer. And I, I would, ask you would uh, stick with that. My only concern is, and maybe Brian, you can move this, um, uh, I don't know which direction we are here, I guess. What part of the property would you like to see? I would like to see the building that's closest to the edge of clearing, which is the one that uh, the deck was, yeah, it's um, 1B there. Okay. I remember looking at this and I think my concern at the, get-go was that the corner, I guess that's the northwest corner of that building is right on the edge of clearing and it's still quite steep there. And while I'm glad that you removed the decking, I still think the, the slopes there are quite steep. Um, it's a little hard to see, but it looks like it goes from, is that 36 feet, Brian? Am I reading that correctly? Uh <clears throat> I'm sorry. 34 is 30. Yeah, this is the 34 foot contour That's line. That's 34. Here. Okay, but then then it's it goes up another two feet, doesn't it? Isn't there a topo line that runs sort of through the? Is that a topo line there? Uh, <laughs> you can, I think what yeah, you're. The, I think this dashed line in orange is a proposed grade, and if you want, maybe I'll scroll down. I'll I'll move over to the uh, grading plan and see if it's a little bit. Uh, yeah. Because it's just, I mean, I'm glad you took the decking down. That was helpful. 
but the whole building is still right at the edge of clearing and that has to be excavated in order to be built. So I'm not sure that that really addresses at least my concerns about the steep slopes there um, because it does go down, you know, pretty, it, it, it goes down pretty dramatically from there. Um, and, and I think, was there, is there a reason you just couldn't pull it back a little bit? It's um, not the building, it's the deck. That's the deck. That's the deck I'm looking the at? The building is much farther away. The building is, I don't know, 15 feet, 20 feet further in. Oh, I see. I'm looking at the deck. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. Okay. All right. So the deck, okay. You still have to anchor those those posts, but that's that'll be less... Uh, much, much less disturbing. Yeah, so I get it. Okay, now that, 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 that's better. Yeah, sorry, I miss, I misread this, misread this plan. Um, yeah, I think that's, I think, you know, uh, 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 I think the landscaping is lovely, um, but I think it should be called landscaping. And uh, just with respect to the spas, because whatever decision we make here will run with the land, um, you know, we should just make sure that there's no chlorine use in the future. You know, I understand that your client and this particular uh, project is requiring, you know, is, is um, indicating that there won't be chlorine used, but that doesn't mean someone might not come along down the pike and I don't believe you can use chlorine in a spa. It doesn't, yeah. it, it's yeah. not resilient <laughs> to the high temperature. Okay. Yeah, well, you can tell I'm on a spa. <laughs> Well, anyway, as long as it's whatever is used to clean it and to maintain it is not going to um, affect the, you know, the water body there. Uh, uh, I think if we can, may maybe we can put some conditions of approval with respect to that. Then Perfectly I'd acceptable. Because the, the spas are, all of them are connected to a dry well, which okay. ostensibly they'll be that'll be used to empty them, to clean them or winterize them. So whatever's in the spa, the, the uh, hot tub's gonna go into a dry well and then yeah, percolate, percolate down. down. I get it. Well, that's why I'm bringing it up. Yeah. So I just wanna make sure that, you know, we understand what that is and that in whatever condition of approval whatever approval goes forward has a condition that addresses that particular thing because it's it's on the plan that's all that's it for me thanks very much Kevin. ian thank you very much for holding up uh yeah Nothing? of course I, I just wanted to i mean it's basically already been said but you know i, I agree with with joel that and, and everybody else that we should call you know a landscaping plan a landscaping plan um not revenge i also agree with the applicant that they're not required to do it here and I think, you know, it's, it's great what they propose and should be encouraged, but let's call it what it is um, so that it's clear we're not accepting this as a, as a revegetation. However, if, if everybody in the future wants to use native plants to do their landscaping, I think that's a great thing. Definitely. All right, and uh, Lou, we heard from you already. You were, the, you were the committee. Ed, do you have anything you want to add? I think my colleagues have covered most of it, but just to add my voice to... We, we definitely need to call landscape plan a landscape plan. It will affect, you know, how coverage is calculated, even though it's not, you know, applicable in this, in this circumstance, it's important that we get it right. So just, you know, casting my votes to that. And uh, also that, yeah, I think it'd be great if uh, you're compromised to epoxy the basement floors, that would be really appreciated. But overall, you know, a very impressive plan, big improvement. Um, Stell and LaGuardia both did a phenomenal job here. I think this is going to be a great project. I would like to join in that I don't have uh, much there. We did cover it all. Uh, and uh, I think the questions, oh, and Brian, thank you very much for the very thorough memo. I think it guided us well here and uh, guided the applicant as well. So uh, are we satisfied with the revisions to the unit 1B and its separation from the steep slope from the northern portion of the property. Anyone yes. not satisfied? Yes. Okay, good. 
Uh, does the board, <laughs> this is, all right, I think I know the answer going in on this. Does the board want to require the clearing boundary to be revised in a manner consistent with the town's definition of revegetation, in quotes, and amend the clearing boundary and associated calculations accordingly? Yes. No, yes. One, no one's saying nay on that. <laughs> Does the board want to modify its request to require the basement and the resort units to comply with groundwater protection policy? And once well, again, I think we, we revise it because yeah, the I think. Offered, go ahead, Kathy. Go ahead. Well, the applicant offered to use epoxy in the basement. Right, right, floor, right, and I right, think right, we've, so, we've so accepted we, that compromised with gratitude. When we put the uh, letter together, let's make sure, Jody. When we put the letter together, let's make sure that we. Uh, mention the epoxy um, alternative, if you will. It, you know what? I, I'm not sure if epoxy is the right term, but it's a sealant. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, seal. You know, you're right. You're, you're right, Andy. Uh, let's say sealant. Uh, we can even go with the appropriate sealant or something like that. Yeah, I think that's that's we'll fine. Get, just to make we'll sure we'll, we'll get problem. language that'll get, you know, that'll get through, get the message across. All right, and finally, does the board want to require further revisions to the lighting plan that includes a lighting schedule for the pathway bollards in addition to the fixture specifications and schedule for the doorway access lights? Yes. Yes. I can imagine there, there's no, no, there are no no's on that one either, I suspect. All right, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you, board. Again, thank you, Brian. Thank you, applicant. Thank you, thank board. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Have a great day. Okay, right. the next item on the plate is uh, 57 Muir Boulevard. And um, Sharon, you have the committee on that, but Eric, Eric, you there? I'm here. Okay, very good, Eric. You could please lead us. Okay. Can I find uh, sorry, hold it. Hold. Um, is, is, beginning. is the applicant's uh, attorney or representative here on the line? Yes, this is Dan Weaver. I'm here on behalf of the applicant. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, go ahead, Eric. Okay, this is an application to change the use of a 2,860 square foot storage building to a two bay repair garage uh, with storage area and bathroom. The property situated on Muir Boulevard in zone CI. Uh, it's also within a number of special groundwater protection areas, including the Pine Barrens, South Fork Special Groundwater Protection Area, and Groundwater Management Zone 5. Uh, the site plan approval was granted in 1988, and the CO was issued in 1991. Uh, for a three unit, uh, three bay storage building with four parking spaces. Uh, under secret, this is a type two action. Um, a repair garage has a parking requirement of four spaces per bay plus one for each employee. A total of 11 spaces have been illustrated. This represents eight spaces for the two bays and then three spaces for employees. Um, we anticipate that there probably would be more than three employees um, just based on you know, my personal experience of going to different repair garages um, and there are two bays there. Um, you should discuss that with the applicants. Um, and although the, the 11 spaces may, you know, meet the code requirement, um, they may have a greater need for parking. Um, this application is the result of a, a, a code violation um, and uh, they were directed to get a site plan approval because uh, they never got it. They, they have changed the use and are operating as a repair garage. Uh, when we inspected the property, um, there was a total of 27 passenger vehicles, uh, both operating and in storage, two motorcycles, two trailers, and um, miscellaneous car bodies and other parts, a canvas car uh, and a canvas car covered uh, carport either on the site or on Muir Boulevard. I'm just gonna show you four pictures quickly. Uh, this is obviously at Muir Boulevard. You can see there's parking in the right of way as well as on the subject property in the front. Um, yeah. This is the rear Eric, of the property. Eric, the yeah. photos, are, photos aren't coming up. Yeah, yeah, you're on the, you have the, the, site, the site plan, Eric. You don't no. have pictures, photos. Okay. Um, can you see them now? No, nope. nope. there are still the site plans. Is that right, Eric? There are the photographs are in the um, packet, right? Yes, they are. I just wanted to show you. Okay, um, okay. okay. It's, it's important to bring those up if we can. But um, yeah, let's, yeah uh, let, let me try. I, I kind of had to adjust on the fly with 
some of my setup here. Mm -hmm. um, can you see the, um, the site plan again? Yes. Yeah, that hasn't gone anywhere. Okay, all right. Um, so yeah, as Sam says, the, uh, the, there's photos in, in the memo. Um, but you know, bottom line, there's, there's a lot of vehicles and uh, storage occurring both on and in front of the site. Um, and you should definitely have a discussion with the applicants whether or not um, they feel that 11 spaces are going to be adequate. Um, the access lanes that they've shown here uh, do meet the dimensional requirements and uh, the board uh, would have to relax the setbacks for the parking spaces, their accessory structures on a commercial lot. Um, as you can see here, there's parking mostly on the southern end of the site, um, which borders a commercial industrial district. Uh, and then also some on the easterly side, which border a um, pre-existing non-conforming residential property, but it is zone uh, CI as well. Um, repair garages can often generate significant, amount, um, significant amounts of noise, um, particularly with impact wrenches and, and other tools. Um, you should uh, discuss um, how noise abatement can be incorporated into the project. Um, as noted, as I just noted, um, there are currently a number of items stored on site. The site plan has a notation that says no outdoor storage is proposed. Uh, that should be changed to read no outdoor storage permitted. Um, there's basically no space here under this site plan layout for any outdoor storage. Um, again, this is within a number of special groundwater protection areas. The principal building was built in 1989, um, which predates the board's groundwater protection policy. Otherwise, you would have designed this industrial use building uh, to meet that. Um, uh, in the past, uh, applicants with non-compliant uh, building, um, buildings non-compliant to the groundwater protection policy, um, have taken measures to incorporate um, some of the spirit of that policy uh, into the building, even though they can't ensure strict compliance. Um, this included adding lips around the perimeter of the ground floor to contain spills, adding epoxy coatings, um, which was just discussed on the other application, um, the applicant's engineer should submit a detailed plan of um, how they can best meet the groundwater protection policy. Uh, the floor plans do not provide the details on the interior of the two service bays. Um, this information should be provided. They should also indicate whether or not they're using pits or lifts uh, to service the vehicles. Um, pits often collect fuel oil during oil changes, uh, transmission fluid, things of that sort, um, which could leach into the ground. Uh, the, also, the applicant should also identify what hazardous chemicals are expected to be stored on site um, and should mention how waste oil and uh, vehicle parts and lubricants will be removed from the site. Uh, as you, if you look to the right uh, eastern edge of the site plan, uh, the project involves adding an exit only egress point that, does, that does not exist yet. Um, it's supposed to be paved with asphalt. Um, drainage calculations uh, should be provided and, and indicate all stormwater uh, will be kept on site. Uh, this includes roof runoff. Uh, the board and the applicant should consider filter drains. Those are more used where you have a shallow depth of groundwater or a protected water body in close proximity. That's not the case here. However, um, since it is a, a unique use that often has a lot of hazardous chemicals, um, you might want to discuss with the applicant um, whether or not uh, filter drains that control chemicals can be added to the existing catch basins or any additional ones that might be needed. Uh, it appears the applicants have already obtained approval of the Suffolk County Department of Health Services. Um, one note we had was that um, the building is serviced by public water, um, but if I can zoom in here a little bit, there's a notation you can see on the cursor here that says proposed new private well. Um, I think that might just be a typo. Um, I believe there used to be a well. But obviously, you can see the location in this well um, here at the cursor is right next to the leaching pool they're proposing, and they already have water service. So um, I think that that might have been an error, but the applicant should uh, clarify that. If you look to the front of the building, you can see it says uh, proposed landscape area. We don't have a landscaping plan. Um, we, we need that. Uh, they submitted a lighting plan. It includes um, only three fixtures uh, to the rear uh, of the site. Uh, they all meet the town code and the board's guidelines. We find them acceptable. Um, the app this application will need ARB approval. We note that they are um, showing on the plans that the central bay door is to be removed. So obviously there's going to be a change to the facade. Um, 
the building elevation plan should also be submitted to the planning board for their review um, and potential comments to the ARB. Uh, the Office of Fire Prevention uh, reviewed this and made some comments about the design of the bathroom, that it doesn't meet universal design for ADA accessibility. Um, the applicant should address that. Um, but basically, in conclusion, the application is incomplete pending the resolution of the aforementioned issues and the submission of the required items. I think the main issues here are um, the parking and potential outdoor storage needs. Again, um, keep in mind with the parking that they have, they do meet the requirement of eight spaces based on two bays. The only real questions here are whether or not there are going to be more than three employees, in which case a parking space, you know, under the code needs to be provided for each employee. Um, and whether or not there is, in fact, going to be a need for outdoor storage, there, there certainly is one now. Um, again, there's no space for any additional parking spaces. So um, if they are storing items, um, you know, in the parking spaces that are not vehicles, um, you know, that, that, that is not in keeping with the site plan approval um, and the use of the parking spaces. And then I think the other main issue really is the um, groundwater protection um, policy. Uh, and finding out what chemicals are going to be on site and um, how they're going to be handled and removed from the site. So I think those are the two principal issues, um, and that's the summary of my report. Well, you also have the setbacks we have to deal with. And, and Sam, if I could just say, um, I do have the photos available if you want want me to bring them up. Uh, well, let's let uh, Mr. Weaver go, and then uh, while Sharon's doing the report, you know, as we need them, we can bring okay. them up. I do, I do think the photos are important. Uh, on this application, particularly considering the parking issues. Uh, so have them ready, but uh, let's, let's uh, hear from Mr. Weaver and then uh, Sharon will be yours. So go ahead, Dan. Thank you, thank you, board. Um, as far as the parking is concerned, you know, as Eric mentioned, there, there really is no other additional room on this property uh, to fit additional parking in order to meet the requirements for the access lanes. Um, I mean, I, we, Although the only way to do that would be to give up some of the landscaped area in the front. Maybe we could add a few more parking spaces up there if needed be, but um, that would be the, really the only option there. Um, as far as the um, noise, I'll have to get a narrative from the applicant on how we can do some noise mitigation. Uh, I know sometimes in, in the past, uh, you know, landscaping could be used, but again, we're out of room here because of the size of this lot, there's really no room to add some landscaping around the perimeter that would soften the noise to the neighbors. But uh, maybe we can do some other um, mitigations with the building. Uh, I'll speak to the applicant about that. Um, outdoor storage, I, that's fine. We can change the note from proposed to permitted. I, that's fine. I think we were just saying proposed because it was being proposed to the board. Um, Groundwater protection, I'll have to talk to the applicant and the engineer about what we can offer on that end. Um, but it does seem reasonable to, you know, see if we can do something to the existing building to um, accommodate, you know, some type of protection. Um, we'll, get a, we'll get a draining plan together and drainage calculations. That's not a problem. Um, we'll, we'll also consider the filter drains and see what we can do with that. I, I don't think that that's an unreasonable ask. Um, yes, we do have Suffolk County Health Department approval. It took a long time. Uh, and during that process, we changed from well to public water. And I think that well was from the previous application in the rear. We were proposing to move the existing well that's in front of the building to the rear. But now that we have public water, you're right, that, that will come off. Um, elevation plan, we will get together for you too. And um, same thing with the fire prevention. So. Uh, we can see we can look at that bathroom and see if there's something we can do with that. I don't think that's uh, a problem. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, Sharon, this is yours, so take it away. And if you want the photographs as you're talking, uh, let me know or let Joanne know and we can have Yeah, them. I've, I've seen the photographs. I have them here on my phone. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I didn't get a really clear indication from the applicant about the number of employees. He said, yes, we can't add any more parking spots, but how many employees work here is not, didn't get answered. So um, do you have an answer of that? <laughs> I don't, that's, I'll have to check with the, with the applicant on that. I, I don't have an answer how many currently work here. Okay. Um, because I think, you know, that, that is probably one of your bigger problems here is making sure that you have the parking and then 
um, you know, all of this outdoor storage. So I'm assuming you're just going to what rent another spot or move it or because uh, there's I mean, I, I agree with Eric that there's no room for outdoor storage. So those items that are out there will need to be removed and cleaned up, I assume. Um, it sounds like there's a lot of unanswered questions here. Unfortunately, I had to leave town, so I did not get a chance to walk around the property. So I don't have a good grasp on the setback issue and how I feel about that. Um, I, you know, I, I, in the memo, it says there's a stockade fence and a retaining wall that sort of separate you know, this property from the adjoining properties. But unfortunately, I didn't get there, but it seems like this will be in front of us again. So um, maybe one of my colleagues got there and can have a better, you know, give you better. You know, Sharon, uh, uh, you know Joe, since you mentioned the stockade fence and there's a picture in there, why don't you, while we're talking, Joanne, uh, put up the pictures and you can, you know, I mean, there's only four of them as far as I can tell. Mm -hmm. I mean to cut you off. No, that's, no, that's right. I mean, I do see the stockade fence. Yeah, well, let, let, it, let the whole world. You know. But I just don't know. So behind it, whether there's a residence, one one of them has a residence, and one is an empty residence, right? Well, I know the whole area there is, is residential. That's that's okay. you know, right down Muir Boulevard. I guess one of, one of the lots is residential, but it's vacant. I guess mm -hmm. according to the memo. Like I said, unfortunately, I did not get there. I think the lot behind it, though, that we're that you're talking about, is another CI property. Is that right, Eric? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. That's correct, right? That's correct. Yes. Yeah, but the rest, the rest of your Boulevard is residential, though. If From I this can... point to the uh, west. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Joanne, if you go to the there's, um, well. There's one along Muir Boulevard. Um, I think I actually figured out that I can screen share it. Yeah. Okay, so that's the first picture I took. Um, that's Muir Boulevard. Um, obviously, you can see this picture is not very good, but you can see that there's cars parked in the right of way of Muir Boulevard. Um, mm -hmm. If you go to the picture. Yeah. Yeah, I have these, and I, I think I can. I think try, I can. Try to, why, don't, why don't you try and do that while Sharon uh, okay. continues? So, sorry. Yeah, so I, like I said, I don't oh, feel like grasp on the setback issue but um you know i think you know the ground protection is going to be very important here making sure we have enough parking for what's going on here um you know i think the filters is a good idea and um you know and and the noise uh mm -hmm. i'm not sure how this became in front of us i know it was uh you know, code violation. So I'm not sure if it was a neighbor that decided they didn't like this here or not. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, there's some work to be done here. I think they have to work on letting us know how they're going to deal with the noise that goes on there, how they're going to protect the groundwater. And, um, you know, besides the lighting and ADA, bath obviously they're going to have to correct the bathroom, um, the <clears throat> parking, and what they're gonna do with everything that's stored on the property right now and how they're gonna function. I don't know. Hey, no. I, I... There's a lot outstanding still. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think there is. Um... Well, one thing, if I can add just real quick to something that Sharon just said, do remember we are removing one bay here. So some of the stuff that's outdoor storage, I believe is gonna be able to go into that center area. That's why that, that center what was a bay is no longer going to be a bay. It's just going to be storage. So I do believe by reducing that one bay, we will have some more room inside the building for some of the stuff that's outside the building currently. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, All right. Yeah. So you can just give us that narrative, you know, as you clean up and give us more answers um, and we can, you know, discuss that at that point. Yeah. Um, I think there's a, there's a lot of work to be done on this one. Um, Thomas, do you have something that you want to? Yeah, I just wanted to clarify something for the board real quick on the parking. Um, so, you know, the board can make a determination on how many employees there are, how many employees are needed. But if they're required to provide 11 parking spaces under the code, that's the board can't really make a finding that they need more. The, so if they meet their parking requirements under the code, that's really it. Now the outdoor storage issue 
you know, I think that's what Eric's getting at with um, his memo. That's really a separate issue. Um, and I know it's there, it gets kind of confusing, but um, you know, if they have, if they're required to provide 11 spaces and they provide 11 spaces, um, it's really the end of the determination as far as the, whether they met the parking requirements. Now, it, Eric noted that the board, uh, you know, that the site plan doesn't, uh, doesn't say that that outdoor storage is not permitted. And, you know, that's something the board can discuss, but I just want to make sure everybody was clear on the whole parking issue and what's required in the town code. But it seemed a little vague to me, Thomas, in terms of number, you know, we understand that four spaces per bay, right? So that's the eight, but right. then it says plus the number of employees, right? Right, but right. But we, but we don't really know how many employees they have. Right. And if, you know, basically what I'm trying to say is if you find that there are three employees and that right. the total is 11 and they've met it, then yeah. they've yeah. met yeah. the requirement. But yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it, you know, that's up to you to, to find. Well, okay. we, we don't have that number right now. The, the applicant's going to have to get back to us. So we really can't even delve into that question, correct? Right. Correct. Okay. And maybe what I should do is ask, we should start with, ask if the board is satisfied with the applicant's explanation on the outdoor storage, which also sounds to me like it's kind of up in the air because of this removal of the bay. But um, mm -hmm. which, which bay is going to be removed, uh, Dan? Center, center so one? The, the center bay, which would become storage and the, the shared bathroom for the other two bays. Okay, so so you you're not going to knock down any walls and make the other two bays larger, right? No. So you mean you're just gonna you're just not going to use it as a service bay, but the building's going to stay the way it is. Correct. Okay. Okay. The use and the use in there will change because it won't it won't be right. It won't won't be service bay anymore. It's going to be storage for parts and and whatever whatever need be for the other two bays. Okay. So a floor plan would be, would I think, is going to be necessary, like Eric suggested, right? Inside, just to see what we can see is going on inside the two bays. We don't really know anything of the interior. Sure. Okay. Well, Thomas, um, I have a question for you, yeah, yeah, if I may. So are you, were you kind of implying what you were saying earlier, that if the, uh, if the uh, applicant chooses to use some of the, as long as they have their 11 spaces, they're good. But if they choose to use some of those spaces for some of the vehicles that are there that are you know, being, quote, stored, is that their prerogative? You know, I'd have to look into that a little further um, as far as whether or not, you know, having a vehicle in a space for a long period of time is, is considered parking or, you know, storage. Um, but what I'm just saying is that if, if we find that the parking requirement is 11 spaces and they meet the parking requirement, then, you know, the board kid doesn't really have the authority to ask for more. Right. Um, now outdoor storage is a, a separate issue. And I, I, I kind of, I understand where you're coming from that it's parking versus outdoor storage. They're, they're very similar concepts, but uh, I just think we need to be careful um, with, you know, what, what we're asking as far as what what is required in the code for parking and what we're asking is not different. Yep. No, understood. I was just curious about that. And, you know, and, and Dan, so you said storage, uh, you know, in this, in the, in the, cent, the current center bay for parts and that sort of thing. Do you think some of those vehicles that are now out in the yard would, would be in there as well? It, it'd be used for actual vehicle storage as well. No, it, it couldn't, Ed, because we're removing the bay door. Well, the bay door is going. Okay. Yes. Okay. Right. That's that's just you know to basically eliminate the, you know, desire to try to use that as a yeah, service yeah, yeah, bay yeah. later. Yes, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> yes, you said that. It's, yeah. it's going to force your hand. So. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. Okay. The, the, so we don't really have any detail, Dan, on on what what the intention is, because there are there are a lot of vehicles there, right? And about what their intentions are to remove them, put them somewhere else, whatever. Yeah, I'll have to talk to the applicant about that, about how they intend to deal with that issue. I'll, I, 
but I do understand that that's something that's got to be resolved and we will, um, we will respond in a, in a way to be able to better explain that. Got it. You, know, you know, Dan, I, 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 I'll say that, you know, I, and there's a lot of issues here that yeah, you, you're obviously coming back uh, that have to be addressed, but I really think that the applicant needs to bear in mind to a greater degree than appears to be the case uh, that it is a, a resident, he's surrounded by residents. I know in back there's a commercial use, but all up and down your boulevard, it's all residential. And, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, th there needs to be more, more recognition by, uh, of that fact by the applicant. Uh, Understood. All right. Does anyone else have any questions? Because uh, there's so much that's up, up in the air right now. I think it might just be a good idea for us to run through the questions and uh, give the uh, applicant some more guidance. But uh, does, uh, before I do that, does anyone have any further comments or questions I for do. Either, uh, Eric or the uh, applicant? I do. Go, Kathy. Um, I just would like, uh, hi, Dan. Um, I mean, I'm really glad that uh, the applicant is, you know, this, this is, this site is really, <laughs> it needs improvement. And I, and I think this is, you know, a step in the right direction. Um, but I would, I would like to understand better in the narrative how you propose to store the kinds of vehicles you need on site because the parking, because, you know, as Thomas has explained, the parking uh, requirement is the parking requirement once we know the number of employees. But I think it strains credibility for us to see that there are 27 vehicles on the site now and that 11 parking spaces and no storage plan is, is you know, there has to be a way to transition our understanding of what exists to what you plan, propose. Mm -hmm. And, and just, I, I can't see that. I mean, I also just wanted to rec say with respect to the setbacks, you know, relaxing the setbacks, um, I, I don't know that I would be willing to do that unless there was significant noise mitigation uh, because even though the neighboring lot is a residence on a commercial lot, the other two are a residential lot. So, um yeah, I think just to, to on that point, uh, I, I think you know the, the the first two questions have to do with parking. I'm going to pass by those right now, okay? Um, because you know the parking issue is too far uh, uh, in the air. So, and the and the second of those two questions is about the structure, the setbacks for the parking. So let's 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 hold that in abeyance until okay. we have more information. All right? Yeah. So, okay. All right. Does anyone else have anything before I move on to the remaining questions, which may also be edited as we go? Right. In that case, um, the first one seems pretty straightforward. Should the notation on the site plan be changed to state no outdoor storage is permitted? And I think that that's probably a big yes all around. Um, we, have to, we have to figure out if that means you can't uh, obey with no door. No, no, it's it's it, we. I still think it's vague whether storing cars that are going to be repaired oh. is out for storage or not. Well, yeah. I, you know, I would just I would just say to that that I think the four the four parking spaces per bay implies that there's cars waiting to go into the bay. So if they don't have sprawl beyond that, frankly, I don't think it's important how long they're there. I think the issue is if they have stuff stored elsewhere. I think I think, I think that's right exactly there. right, Ian. Yeah, that yeah. sounds right, Ian. Yeah, yeah. I, don't get me wrong. I understand the concern here, and I think it's important. There's a narrative that says their their business is going to operate in compliance with the code. But you know, if they have a car parked for a month in a parking space and no car is not in a parking space and no outdoor storage, I think that that's okay. This, uh, I mean, it's that's consistent with the business use to keep the car there. It's well, the idea here is to not make it the uh, unsightly uh, situation that we have now. And, uh, yeah, it's, I don't think anybody that. I, just, okay. I, just, I think we need to know where the other, you know, if 27 vehicles are there, minus 11, where the other. Well, you know, they're going to get, you know, the, it's the, the, the math calculation, they'll come back and we'll, you know, back, back into that, so to speak. All right. Um, 
sort of detailed plan demonstrating measures taken to comply with our uh, the planning board's groundwater protection policy be submitted? Yes. Uh, anyone yes. say no on that? I'm gonna yes. Go away. <laughs> okay. Uh, should the narrative detailing the, what hazardous materials will be stored on site and how waste oil and other materials will be removed from the site be submitted? Yes. yes. Don't imagine there's a no on there. Should a site grading, drainage, and paving plan, which includes drainage calculations, be submitted? Should filters be provided on drainage controls? Can yes. Yes. I'm going to yes. hear any notes. Should a landscaping plan be submitted? Yes. Yes. Generally, yes. Is the lighting plan acceptable? Uh, go yet? I, I, this may be a little premature also. Yeah, I don't even... Yeah. We have a light, lighting plan. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, as I said, it, it only consists of three fixtures on the rear of the building. Um, each one would be over where currently there's the three bays are. They're wall-mounted packs. Um, they meet all the foot candle and lumen requirements. They're fully shielded. Um, they meet the town code requirements and the planning board's guidelines. Um, we find it acceptable. Um, it's minimal lighting again, to the rear of the site where, you know, again, there are residences or, well, a vacant residential property to the west, a, a pre-existing non-conforming residential property to the east. It's very minimal lighting. Um, they're not proposing any post lights to the rear over those parking spaces. I have no objection to it. Um, but I would recommend that the board find it acceptable. It may need to change in the future, but as it is now, it, it meets all your, your guidelines. Let, let, I, I think it'd be a good idea just to, to before we give a, a thumbs up on that. Let's 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 hold off to the next one because uh, you know they are going to remove a bay and you know people. And I, frankly, I'd also like to get Sharon to have a chance to uh, the next time she's around uh, go over and uh, give us a, her sense of it. Sharon, if that's okay with you. Yeah. No. Of course. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then the last question: Should the uh, building elevations be submitted? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sam, on the, Sam on, the, on the groundwater protection question. Yeah. Um, Eric's point about uh, are are they using lifts or pits? I think that would be probably part of the groundwater. You know, if they're using pits, then we're going to want to know how they're keeping anything from leaching. Mm -hmm. Does Dan know? Oh, you didn't know that offhand, right? All uh, right, you know what, Randy? That's a good point. Uh, when we, Jody, when we put out the questions, let's 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 specify uh, whether they'll be using lifts or pits. Well, yeah, that's, even that's something I, I should have had as a question there, but um, in the body of the memo, um, we're recommending that they submit a floor plan that includes yeah. and that'll identify it. Okay. All right. All right. Um, does anyone else have anything they want to add on this one? If not, Dan, you have a lot. <laughs> We're giving you a lot to do on this one, but uh, it needs a lot. So we look forward to hearing from you again on it. Understood, and I thank the board for their time. Thanks, Thanks Dan. Dan. Okay. Next is Gatsby, which is uh, Eric, yours again, and Ian, that's going to be you when we get to it. And I thought I saw Mr. Whalen. There he is. Okay, good. So uh, do you have anybody else who's working on this one with you? Uh, Manny Norvellas has been, but I'll be the only one speaking tonight. Very good. Okay, so let's go forward. And uh, once again, Eric. Okay, um, the last time you reviewed this, you had a number of um, outstanding items. You'd request that a clearing envelope be established on the site plan to re or restrict where possible future clearing could occur. Uh, as you look at the site plan here, you'll see a green box drawn around the middle of the property or in the area of existing um, development. That's what they're proposing as the clearing envelope. Uh, we find that acceptable. You should determine if you agree. Um, the applicants have stated that they in intend to offer a covenant, which would require that the 10,738 square feet dog run area be allowed to revegetate naturally upon transfer of ownership. You should discuss um, what would be required with council. That area, as you look at the site plan, is the pink, slash red area um, outside of that, that fenced lawn um, in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Um, the board asked uh, the applicants to address how pesticides, herb herbicides, and fertilizers 
um, you know, how they would, how much they would be used on the property and uh, how irrigation would be mitigated. The letter states that no pesticides or herbicides will be used and that only our organic fertilizers will be used. Um, the board should again discuss this with the applicants and council and determine um, whether or not this should be a condition of approval or um, perhaps a covenant um, should you find this uh, acceptable mitigation. Uh, there was a question about the scenic easement in the northern end of the property uh, and whether or not the driveway was allowed to continue to pass through the easement. I will defer to council on that one. Uh, the applicants did submit a copy of the scenic easement and it does appear um, that it does allow for a path through the easement, but um, I'll let uh, Thomas verify that for you for sure. Uh, the project does qualify as a minor site plan, which means the board can waive the public hearing requirement. We brought this up at the initial review and the board said that they did want a public hearing, um, but it looks like the application is otherwise complete. Uh, so you should again have that discussion and determine um, whether or not it's ready to be scheduled for a public hearing. And that's that's it on this, or my comments anyway. Just real quick, um, I've reviewed the scenic easements with Maddie Norvillis, and I agree with Eric that uh, they are allowed to take access across the easement. And as far as the proposed covenants here, if the applicant is willing to agree to them, then I think both can be resolved by a covenant. Very good. Eric, could you just um, enlarge this a little bit? Um, so the green box that you're talking about, is that that sort of lime green on the outside, the perimeter? The, the, that's that's a proposed clearing envelope. The okay. edge is clear. Um, okay. I just I couldn't see it that well when it was that smaller. Okay, yeah. that's all I wanted to know. Tough to see, but yeah, again, that um, no future clearing would be allowed to occur outside of that box. The clearing, you know, the the native natural um, woodlands, which this lot has never been cleared, uh, in the northern and southern ends of the property would be protected from any future clearing. Okay. Um, that, I think that wraps that up uh, for your comments. What are, what are the the uh, the clearing, <clears throat> Eric? What are the 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 what's the question here about clearing? It's they are they're over. I know it's a large lot, and they're over uh, the the threshold that requires a special permit. Correct. Uh, is there another clearing issue? Are they, you know, beyond the amount that we're supposed to uh, go to or anything? I remember that this, I remember him coming in before and, um, and uh, he was very concerned about his wife who loved the dogs but I did read in obit that she passed away. Yeah, no, I think the things, I think the application has changed since we first saw it yeah. uh, two years ago. Uh, can I, um, Chairman, can I just address that? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'll bet you, bit before you do, Eric, uh, that you wrapped up, right? You don't have anything else, right? Yeah, so, I mean, I think there was a, a question in there from Randy. Um, yeah. No, they're not asking for uh, an, a, you know, uh, an extra amount of clearing that's beyond what the planning board is allowed to grant. And in fact, actually, they slightly reduced the request um, from yeah. the last time you reviewed it. They're right. asking for uh, right. an excess of 10,738 square feet, um, which would be um, allowed to naturally revegetate um, upon uh, the transfer of ownership as per the applicant's offer of a covenant. So um, mm -hmm. they're asking for that 10,000 plus, uh, 10, plus square feet, and then they're offering to let that revegetate naturally upon transfer of ownership. Okay, thank you, Eric. All right, uh, sorry to hold you up there, uh, Mr. Whalen. Go ahead. Oh, well, just an answer to, uh, yeah. to Randy's question. Uh, Randy, the only thing the applicant needs is a special permit for uh, excess clearing, which is beyond what would normally be the, beyond the 45,000 square feet of clearing 
that is automatically uh, allowed on a lot of uh, 6.8 acres or more. So our lot is around 11 acres. Effectively, what we're asking for, because the door run area, which is that pink area, when this property is sold, and I, I'm not going to speculate when that might be, but you know, it might be sooner than later. When that property is sold, when the property is sold, that area, which is fully wooded, uh, the only the only issue is there is that the the applicant uh, you know has used it as a dog run area, and so the understory is pretty much devastated. But once you stop running dogs there, the understory is going to begin to grow back. And so when you when you factor that back in, uh, the applicant's asking for a little under eight thousand square feet of additional clearing on the eleven acre lot. Um, we're not allowed, the maximum allowed under the special permit regulations in, in general is 15% of the lot. Even with the dog run area, I think we were at 14.5%. And the actual total limit that we're going to, if you if the door when the dog run area revegetates, will be at something like 12.2% of the entire lot cleared. So the only the only special permit we need is the only thing we need is the, the special permit for access clearing. Um, I just, I just address quickly the other items. Really, all of the other items, I think, can be incorporated into a single uh, declaration. We would put in there a restriction uh, that binds any, you know, any future owner of the property, including the current owner, of course, uh, to the, that, that clearing envelope. And I'm going to come back to that. I have a question for you on that um, for the board. We are prohibiting pesticides and herbicides in the property. Uh, any um, any fertilizers would have to be organic, and the uh, the the dog run area when the property is resold, that area. Well, first of all, until then, that area cannot be further cleared. In other words, the applicant is not allowed to clear the overstory, uh, and when the property is sold, then the understory has to be left to to re revegetate naturally. Uh, the one question I have for you, actually, and this is how I see it working, but you tell me if this is what you had in mind. We're not proposing to change the existing clearing boundary from what it is, but the board did want an envelope, mm -hmm. I guess, in case someone in the future, you know, were to say, well, I want to redistribute the cleared area. What I would propose that we would do is if someone did want to redistribute the clearing area, which is basically to say they want to, they want to you know, change that around, which would mean they'd have to revegetate wherever they cleared anew, but they'd have to stay within that rectangle. I would imagine that should require a building permit. So in other words, they'd have to go to the, to the building department, get a building permit to change the clearing, because at the time they changed the clearing, they'd have to show the town that they were going to revegetate somewhere else. And you know, presumably natural resources would have to approve that and tell the building department. But I just want to make sure that that's how it would work. In other words, if, if someone wanted to change the clearing within the box, remember they're limited to the total amount of clearing, but they, whatever, they decide to take the tennis court away or something, and they want to put more clearing close to the house. For their, theoretically, they could do that as long as the, the amount of clearing remained the same, but they'd have to do come up with a revegetation plan. And I would so, think the mechanism... How would you um, uh, enforce that or, you know, memorialize that? Well, well I'm, I'm saying that, that, well, we'd memorialize that within the declaration. Okay. And the mechanism for doing that, I think, should be a building permit. In other words, I'm, I'm suggesting that you want to say that the owner of the property can only clear within the rectangular box. Right. I'm saying that if they want to change, if, yeah, I got it. If they you want, want to change to what they have right now, they should right. have to get something for it. Just okay. move it somewhere else within the property. That's within, the, well, within uh, that box, within the rectangle, within that's the, the green box on the 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 top of the of the of the of the uh, site plan. How, in other words, how would you control that? And I'm suggesting mm -hmm. that you should, you probably should require a building permit. No, what I'm asking is the the the, the, per, the part of the parcel that you're talking about. Right. Um, I don't know if you're looking at the screen that I'm looking. I am. At. I am. The, uh, the green. There's a green rectangle. The lime right. green rectangle. I'm sorry. The it's, lime green rectangle. Yes. Lime. Well, yeah, it, that's the color. Sam, it, yeah. Sam, it almost looks like an outline of the lot. That's right. But the yeah. lot is so long that it actually limits. It's not the tennis court. Which oh, okay. Oh, thank you. Okay. That's the last thank law. You. Oh, right. Thank you. Now, all right. I see what you're there you saying. go. There you go. 
within so, that. All right, I got you. I, I, the I, board I, wanted to ensure mm -hmm. that if anyone in the future changed the clearing boundary, that any of this clearing would have to remain within that rectangle. And we've agreed, and all I'm just saying is if I'm going to do a declaration, how do I provide, for, you know, what mech, under what mechanism could such clearing occur? And I'm, I'm suggesting you do it by building permit. Okay. All right. I, I, I see what you're saying. Let me ask you, do you have anything else you want to um, suggest on this? No, I, I think uh, Eric's memo covers it. And as I said, the, the conditions in there, the, the, uh, the first, second, and third item would all be, I would propose, be put within a single covenant that we would propose mm -hmm. your council would review and, and you'd approve it. All right, great. All right, in that case, uh, let me move into the discussion. And Ian, this is yours, right? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Sam. Um, Thank you. I don't. I don't think there's a, a lot to discuss here. I think this. This is very close. Um, my big concern was the scenic easement, which it sounds like is is fine for the driveway to go over that. Um, you know, as far as the revegetation and the covenant after transfer of ownership, I'm fine if you want to offer that. Uh, frankly, I'm not sure it's it's necessary, but I, I certainly think it's it's a it's a positive and not a negative. Um, in the clearing envelope, uh, Rick, everybody, I could be wrong here, but I think that usually is a building department issue. So I, I think that it's fully appropriate that that would be the case here. We're saying, you know, we recognize this area is potentially clearable within the maximum that we're allowing. Um, and I, I wouldn't expect that to need to come up for the planning board um, as long as Thomas and, you know, the planning department agrees. Uh, last thing I would say about the, the pesticides and herbicides and fertilizer um, also, I welcome this as a, you know, part of that declaration. Um, I do think we should be careful, though, sometimes. Pesticides are a very broad category. I know it sounds horrible, um, but I don't want to get into a, a position where we're setting a precedent that anytime we're talking about clearing, we also limit that because there's organic pesticides and there's, you know, home gardens and, and things. That's a very broad term. So, again, I welcome it. If you want to offer it, great. Um, I just don't want to be in a position where the next time something comes up, we'd say, hey, last time we did this, and so we always do it. Um, otherwise, I think it's ready to go. Um, I believe last time I was not in favor of requiring a public hearing, although I, I, I could be mistaken there. I don't think this requires one. Um, I think I'm in the minority there. Um, and if it does, and everybody else thinks it does, I think it's ready to be scheduled. Very good. Can, can, I, have... can I ask a question um, in relation to ahead, what you just brought up? I'm, I'm just thinking this through. You know, what we intended when we said no, you know, no uh, herbicides and, and pesticides was the lawn area. I mean, I suppose if the person had wanted to put a garden on the property, you know, a garden, whether it's flowers or they're doing it for food production, you know, or their own food garden, um, I think we'd probably agree that that's not something that on um, which at least organic, um, you know, pesticides or herbicides should be forbidden. I mean, it would be okay to just say that limitation extends to the lawn and not to a garden. I leave it to you. I mean, we'll do whatever you want, but I mean, if they had, if they had a garden on the property, uh, I would want them to be, tech I would want a future owner to be technically in violation because they used, you know, or, uh, organic herbicides on their, on their food crop. Uh, well, I mean, you know, you're going to have to be, uh, you know, whatever, whatever it is that you're going to work out in terms of the covenant or however, however it's uh, uh, verbalized, um, maybe that, you know, when you work with counsel on that, you I can just say not use it on the lawn. That. I mean, not use the, in other words, we would, that would apply to the lawn. Yeah. Well, well yeah, but, but like I say, it's, you know, there's all stuff that'll go after approval that you'll, you know, presuming approval, that you'll um, work out the specific language with counsel uh, on, on, on what you're suggesting. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, is this ready? I, I think the thing to do is just ask everyone, uh, is this uh, ready for approval? Uh, and I don't need to go around the table, do I? Before <laughs> holding a public hearing, you would have to decide whether or not to hold a hearing first. All right. So the question is, is it complete? Are you going to have a public hearing? You have the right to waive it. If not, then it would also, it, you know, the question is also, um, is it ready for approval? All right, well, uh, so I guess first I'll ask um, 
What are you saying, Eric? I, I should be asking first whether or not we want to waive public hearing? Yeah, basically, yeah. Uh, how, how does everyone feel about waiving public hearing? Does anybody want a public hearing? I'm sorry, somebody talking? About, I'm sorry. That was no, that's okay. I just want to know. Does anyone here want a public hearing on this one? I do. Eric? Ed? Okay. Anyone else? I don't. I think I think I need to take a vote on this one. Public hearing. I'm sorry. I'd vote for public hearing. All right. Um, all right. Let's do it this way. Let, let's just. I'll go around uh, real quick. Uh, start with Sharon. Sharon, yes or no on a public hearing? I don't think we need one for this property. Randy. Ugh, I'm on the fence. Okay. I'll do whatever Ed, whatever Ed and Kathy tell me to do. Uh, don't do it that way, Randy. <laughs> Tell me, please. Just, just. <laughs> yes or no? Uh, I'd be in favor of public hearing. It's an important right. groundwater one, area. One yes, one no. Uh, Kathy. Yes. Two yes, one no. Ian. No. Two two. Lou. No. Two three. Um, Ed. Yes. Three, three. Damn. Me. <laughs> Look at that. I say yes. So that's oh, the we can. He tips the scale. Hey, listen, <laughs> once in a blue moon, right? <laughs> He's our Kamala Harris. Right? Uh, well, thank you. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm in good company. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so uh, uh, I'm afraid there'll be a public, uh, afraid uh, there'll be a public hearing on it. All right, now, now knowing that, are we uh, ready to... Uh, um, what's the, yeah, I, I, I like that. I mean, just to weigh in on those conditions of approval, I appreciate that Rick has offered to, um, you know, make a covenant for those three things that we that are listed. Um, maybe there's some way to work out, you know, this herbicide and pesticide thing. Uh, but if we have, we'll have time after the public hearing too. There might be somebody that comes up with some suggestion, and we may have some other examples of things we've done in the past for similar um you know groundwater protection i can think of one out, out in montauk that we did that might might be uh useful um that's something also that i can look into um i'm looking right now at the um, standards for the water recharge overlay district uh which is 255 365 and then parts g and h talk about um, a list of prohibited hazardous substances and a list of pro prohibited hazardous chemicals. I, I might be wrong on this, but I believe when water recharge overlay district was first adopted, there were actually um, a set of standards about the amount of turf area that could be, that could have um, pesticides, herbicides, things of that sort used on it that doesn't exist anymore. These sections of the code basically just say that the natural resources director may compile, update, and distribute an inventory of fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides, or other chemicals, which they deem to be a serious threat to the health, safety, or welfare of the residents of the town of East Hampton, if introduced into the environment in the water recharge areas of the town. Um, such inventory, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Kim may have a suggestion. Kim, yeah. Kim Shaw may have a suggestion. Why don't we just, you know, uh, consult her on this? And I will, I will do that. And again, that's, that's irrespective of whether it be lawn or garden. Right. Or like um, right. So I will do that. Um, Rick brought up the process um, for when you want to do additional clearing. Right. Uh, obviously, if you're not going over your clearing restriction, you don't need a building permit. You don't need anything. You don't need to go to natural resources. Um, it, most commonly, we see land you know, plans that are reviewed either by the building department or the zoning board of appeals or um, natural resources uh, in association with someone over clearing a property um, or going to get an updated CO or a building permit. You find out that they're over cleared or with the zoning board of appeals when they're applying for something, uh, a variance or an NRSP. Really the process, if you're going to do clearing in a new area uh, and then revegetate another area so that you're not over it, what you're supposed to do is go to, um, natural resources, Mark Abramson in particular, usually reviews those applications. Um, they would get something that he would sign off on and then he would send it to the building department and they would, ver you know, they would verify that it was accepted. 
I don't know that they necessarily issue building permits for that. There's nothing in the code that triggers a building permit for that. Again, usually these things are in conjunction with somebody asking for a building permit or updating their CO. Um, if you're not building anything, I think really the thing to do um, is just to get that approval that in writing from Mark and then update your CO with an updated survey that shows the new clearing boundary um, so that that can be filed and, and recorded and verify that you're compliant. Um, so that's really the way that we've done it in the past um, is that it would go through natural resources and then the property owner would update the CO um, with a survey that showed the new clearing boundary. So I don't know if there's an, actually a building permit involved in that. I don't think that there is, you know, unless you're building structure. Um, and this is part of that. If they're, in, if they're increasing, if they're in, I mean, normally if you want to, if you want to over clear, you have to get a special permit. Right. Here uh, shouldn't these details be worked out? After yeah, I don't want. I think we're getting in the weeds here, and I really don't want to do this in the middle of the meeting um, because it, the, the the issue is now we have a public hearing that's going to be scheduled, and um, I guess the only thing between the applicant and uh, and council is the the mechanics of uh, whatever declaration or covenant or whatever. I, I'm sorry if I'm slippery with the word here. I don't mean to be. I'm just not clear what what it's going to the exact mechan uh, mechanics of it is but do we do that ahead of the public hearing or after the public hearing um be nice to have it at the public yeah hearing. That, that, that's kind of where i'm i'm at uh i'll ask the applicant how quickly do you think you could sit down with um council and make sure that we have everything in place because i would well, like to get it scheduled yeah no well not difficult at all i mean i i would i would ask you not to delay scheduling it uh, schedule the hearing at the earliest opportunity. But I promise, I'll. Uh, it's a declaration of covenants restrictions. Right. It's not going to be difficult to do. You know, I can get it done. We'll get it done by next week. And okay. Uh, in that case, uh, Sam, the way this Thomas can look at it. The way we do this is the board will determine what uh, they want as far as conditions in the approval, and the conditions will say we want a covenant that has X, Y, and Z, and you know we can. Rick and I can have a discussion, or Maddie and I can have a discussion about what that language is, but that's what goes in the approval resolution. Then after the resolution is adopted, then they then we discuss the covenant and, and they send in a covenant. Then I look at the covenant compared to the approval and check all the boxes and make sure it matches. Mm -hmm. um, but all of that is stuff we can do down the line. Um, you know, we need to schedule the public hearing first and right. then after the public hearing is closed, the board will decide what conditions they want. Okay, okay. And that, that's exactly my point. I, I, I don't want to hold up the applicant. Uh, I mean, we are going to do a public hearing. We voted to voted for that. Um, but I don't want to hold up the applicants having the public hearing. So that's why I asked the, the applicant the question. And it sounds like between the uh, you, Thomas, and the applicant, you'll be able to get that done and we'll get the uh, public hearing resolution on for our next meeting. If okay. we, well, just to clarify, you you do want me, do you want me or do you not want me to submit a draft declaration for your review before you actually have your hearing? Yeah. Uh, I think ahead of the hearing, yes. I'm just talking about we're going to schedule the hearing. So uh, we, uh, uh, Thomas, we don't, happen, we don't, oh, Kathy, wait a second, Kathy, one second. Right? Thomas, we don't have to, we don't have to hold up scheduling the hearing while you and Rick work out whatever language it's going to be, correct? No, the board determines what conditions they want. The applicant will decide whether those are acceptable or not accept, whatever. And then we will put it in a resolution afterward. The public hearing needs to get scheduled as quickly as possible. Then, you know, if Rick wants to submit proposed language, that's fine. But typically we usually wait till after the public hearing, public hearing is closed and the board determines what conditions they want. If that's good yeah. for the applicant. Yeah, I'll probably go ahead and submit proposed. There's no harm in doing that. I'm pretty sure that you know these conditions or something very close to them will be what you require. So I might as well get the jump on it. All right, get some guidance from Thomas, and we'll be able to. You know, I, what I don't want to do is I don't want to you know uh, uh, hold hold things up. Uh, yeah, no, and I, and that's, yeah, I don't want you. I'd like you to go. I'm ahead sure you do. I'm sure you do. So. All right, very good. Uh, Thank you. So we'll get that done as quickly as we're able to. And uh, that's that.
Thank you. Great. Thank, thank you all. Thank you, applicant. Thank you, Tom. And thank you, uh, Ian, very much. Does anyone have else? Anyone have anything else? Hearing none, we'll now move on to. I have so many papers. Is it new singular? No, it's Mark. Marco, this is yours. So um, I see Drew on the line. Uh, who, who are the applicants' uh, representatives on this one? Uh, Scott Howe with uh, the executive director at ARF is here and mm -hmm. Karen Hogue, and, our counsel. Oh, okay. Right, That's Karen Hogue. All right, very good. I'm sorry. I was, I, I'm working with a little screen now, so <laughs> okay. let me fix that. Okay, very good. All right, so uh, we'll hear from Marco and then we'll hear from you, Ms. Hogue, and, uh, and the applicants. And uh, so, Marco, it's yours. And then who's the committee on this one? Uh, Randy, is it you? Yes, it is. All right, Randy's the committee on this. All right, go ahead, Marco. You're on. Okay, um, Animal Rescue Fund of the Hamptons, Inc. owner has made an application for site plan approval pursuant to Article 6 of Chapter 255 of the East Hampton Town Code to expand the existing ARF Adoption Center. Uh, such proposals are listed in this memo. Um, these have been reviewed before. Um, the property contains 981,846 square feet, which is 22 and a half acres roughly, and is located on the east side of Daniel Holes Road in Wayne Scott, and is situated in an A5 residence slash water recharge overlay district, uh, zoning district, as shown on the official zoning map of the town of East Hampton. Uh, the premises are identified on the Suffolk County tax map as uh, number 300-192-3-4. So the planning board had raised questions, had raised concerns regarding the applicant's test hole data and depth to groundwater. The applicant's engineer has submitted revised plans and a narrative that is attached to the memo addressing the board's concerns. Uh, revisions are limited to the test hole, uh, to test hole data, sanitary plans, and calculations. The revised leaching pools are proposed to be two feet shorter to groundwater. Uh, in addition, each wastewater treatment unit has been revised to increase the rated capacity by 100 gallons per day from 500 gallons to 600 gallons and from 900 gallons to 1,000 gallons. Um, the planning board should review the attached narrative regarding the sanitary depth and groundwater that was submitted by the applicant engineer. A uh, public hearing was held uh, electronically by video and teleconferencing. Uh, televised on local TV, LTV Channel 22, was made available for live stream on the LTV website, December 9th, 2020. Uh, transcript of the hearing was posted to the town's website after the hearing, and the hearing was to remain open until January 7th, 2020, for the purposes of receiving written comments. No members of the public spoke at the hearing, and no written letters have been submitted to the file to date. Uh, comments from the fire marshal dated October 30th, 2020, have found the submitted information sufficient and no improvements for fire Fighting protection are required. Uh, a determination from the Suffolk County Planning Commission dated December 1st, 2020, has considered the matter for local determination as there appears to be no significant countywide or intercommunity impacts. The project is an unlisted action pursuant to, uh, to CICRA uh, and Chapter 128 of the Town Code. The planning board has determined that no significant adverse impacts have been identified and a negative declaration was made pursuant to CICRA and chapter 128 of the town code. So in conclusion, provided the board agrees, the application is ready for approval. Conditions of approval include approval from the Suffolk County Department of Health Services and from the ARB. Very good. Thanks very much, Mark. Good report. Um, Ms. Hogue. Uh, your uh, turn. Sure. Good evening, board members. Uh, as Marco had stated, we had submitted revised plans and a narrative from Drew Bennett. Uh, so I, I think it would be helpful if um, Drew can kind of touch on some of those points highlighted in his narrative of January 21st and reflected on the revised site plan. Uh, good evening. This is Drew Bennett. <clears throat> Forgive me. I have quite a bit of echo on my end. So I'm not sure if you can hear me clearly, um, but I'll proceed. If you can't hear me, just let me know. So can you hear me? Yes, yes. go ahead. Okay. Um, okay, so we, we made a number of um, refinements to the plans. 
it's um <clears throat> sorry i have so much feedback on my end i can't even hear what's going on so um so Every, let's see what i can do you should mute what, so we made some refinements to the sanitary <laughs> plans and the site plans that focus primarily on demonstrating separation from groundwater and the plans now clearly demonstrate that we have more than four foot separation from the base of leaching pools and the base of all sanitary systems. Uh, there was some confusing information that was presented on the first page, uh, which is the soil boring. Uh, we're reusing a soil boring from 2014. Uh, the map that was prepared in 2014 was done by a different engineer. He shows an elevation of 32 feet at the test boring location. The updated Walbert survey showed it as an elevation of 30. Um, I was not able to explain the difference between the two, uh, why there's two different elevations, but it's it's uh, immaterial at this point, in that we have uh, greater than five feet of separation between the base of the leaching pool and the dry wells. Uh, we we also point out that um, we are designing around we're designing the systems to uh, two feet higher than what was observed, so we're clearly in compliance. As far as uh, increasing the the uh, on-site wastewater treatment system capacity, that's merely an update from the manufacturers. They go through rating capacity ratings, and that's just their updated rating. Uh, and that's uh, been added to the map uh, in response to a comment from the Suffolk County Department of Health Services. So. Um, that's pretty much all I wanted to point out. And if I can answer any questions, I'm available. Very good. Thanks very much. Um, Randy, you're the committee on this, so go right ahead. Yeah, I, um, I think Drew covered all the comments and um, I think it looks good. It's ready to go. Excellent. I was, uh, I, I was expecting that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone else, uh, anyone disagree <laughs> with that? Uh, I'm listening and hearing nothing, so uh, I think we're good to go, and uh, we can. Uh, what What do we need to do with this? Is this a resolution up next time, right? Yeah, we should, that that's right. Yeah, that's nice good, work, that's Member good. Parsons, and thanks to the applicant for you know yeah, correcting. Thank you. Yes, mistakes. yes. Thank you for reminding me to thank people, Kathy. <laughs> You're right. So thank you to the applicant. Thank you, Marco and uh, Ms. Hogue and um, everybody over at ARF. So Great. Okay. thank you very much. Thank you, board members. Well, way to go. All right, last item, last item on our uh, work session is uh, new singular. And I guess what, what do we have? A, is it a wrap up? Well, all right, uh, new singular wireless. This is you, Eric. And uh, yeah. is the applicant on the line also? Still seeing Ms. Hogue in my little window here. <laughs> Make sure that we, I'm looking, I'm looking for the Zoom and having everybody in it that I need. Pat Lindblom. I'm sorry? Uh, I believe their agent's name is Matt Lindblom. Is he there? Is he on the line? Uh, Chair, I don't see anyone by that name in the Zoom feed, and there's no callers on the phone. Can you repeat the name Thomas? again? Matt Lindblom. Did he knows about this? Um, I, he could be notified. Yeah, I, I sent him the link, but... There is no one by that name in the Zoom call. And again, there's no Thomas, one. Thomas, what do you want to do? Uh, well, why don't we skip? Do we have anything else? No, no, the, the only other thing we have is... Uh, Akabonic Grove, which, uh, you know. Why don't um, we just do that in case he's, you know, signing on? Uh, that, that, that's yeah, that's fine. In that case, it gives me a moment to uh, take a breath. And uh, it's a good idea, Kathy. So why don't you do your, uh, do, do we'll, we'll shift into regular meeting. Uh, I'll hand the uh, steering wheel over to Kathy. And right. uh, once you're done, let me know. Okay. So um, Sam has recused from his application. So I'm just going to ask, uh, Ed, to um, Ed, do you have the uh, modification for Akabonic Grove expansion? To I do not. I do yeah. not. I don't even see it on my agenda. To tell you the truth. Well, there was an updated agenda. I don't. I don't have. Um, 
I don't actually have it myself. Uh, hmm. Hey, Joe, can you help us? Here? Shall I read it? There was a yeah. modification, um, br something brought to our attention today, I believe, that required a modification. So we went ahead and prepared the resolution, just modifying the it to eliminate a condition requiring health department approval. Right. It should, it should be in your email with the updated agenda, but I can read the resolution if you like. Why don't you do that? Yes. In the matter of the Akabana Grove Cemetery Expansion 2 site plan for a modification for um, uh, removal of the condition of Suffolk County Department of Health Services approval, I've read the resolution and move for its adoption. Second. All in favor? Aye. So Aye. maybe. Any maybe. opposed? Hi. Maybe we should have a planning board member introduce it officially. Jody read it really well, but I don't know if she can introduce a resolution. So okay, well, can someone move what Jody is, is just say so moved? Um, Thomas, do you have any guidance on this? I, I have the resolution. I can read it. Oh, if that all right, why don't you go ahead and do that, please, Lou. Okay, in the matter of the application of Akabonic Grove Cemetery Expansion to Site Plan Suffolk County Tax Map Number 300-103-2-4.1, I've read the resolution amending approval and I move to approve it. Do we have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is anybody opposed? Okay, so it, uh, it's approved six, uh, nothing. Okay, um, so that's the only thing we have to do that's uh, in, the, in our regular board meeting. We're back to our work session. Sam? Yes, I'm trying to, here I am. Here I am. There you are. Okay. All right. Uh, so I, I don't, you know, thanks very uh, much. What do you recommend? Uh, um, I, well, I just checked my email. I sent it to him. I haven't received anything, but I, I recommend we not move forward with it um, till the applicant is present. Yeah, th th this is not a uh, just a matter of uh, approving a wrap up memo and closing out because there is an open issue about the noise standards under Chapter 185, and uh, you know the, this, the, this is the kind of thing that we we need to give the applicant some uh, uh, ability to speak. Um, Thomas, we don't have any shot clock issues or anything like that with this? Um, I mean, I, I don't I mean, believe so, but, not here, but I also, yeah, I, I would imagine that the applicant not being present would yeah. um, provide us a good legal argument. Yeah, yeah, I just, you know, you, 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 you know me, I like, if I can avoid a fight, I like to avoid a fight, but there right. certainly shouldn't be a fight. So, all right. So we're going to bounce this till the next, uh, adjourn this, I should say, to the next uh, available date. And with that, we have nothing else. Uh, it is now 8.22 or 3. Um, so does anyone have anything they need to add? Questions, comments, queries, inquiries, anything? No? No. I think everybody did a terrific job. Yes, I do. I think this was uh, very efficiently run tonight. So thank you. And we actually covered a matter matters of substance substantively. So with that, uh, if nobody has anything, I will be pleased to take a motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> in that case, we have a meeting next week. See thank you, you, everybody. Thanks, Jerry. Bye. 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 Bye.